perhaps more than the public markets, although they do their share of buyouts and financing various things as well. Uh, Bruce Flatt's run the firm for a very long time, since I think 2002, continues to do that as well. Uh, they are big in renewables, infrastructure, private equity, real estate, private credit. And I asked him, well, you know, in terms of where the opportunity is, take a listen. Where do you think, to the extent there is more of an opportunity? I mean, AUM, you're obviously uh, the smallest AUM is renewable power and transition. Is that the one that you think will grow the most? Look, I, I, uh, it, we, it was part of our infrastructure business before. We split it apart because there's three things going on in the world today. I'll call them megatrends. The decarbonization of the world, so taking carbon out of the system, deglobalization, and the biggest one that is, um, is, is out there is the decarbonization of the world. And so we took our renewables business, uh, we separated it from infrastructure, we created a fund, uh, we raised a fund last year or two years ago with Mark Carney as the head of it, and uh, it's for decarbonization. And what we're doing, it's a $15 billion fund and we're out raising a second one now, and what we're essentially doing is providing money to companies or assisting them have less carbon within their system. That's all. How are you it's doing not, that? It's not good. Right. We're, we're not making decisions as to whether things are good or bad or black or green. We're just providing money. So it's not an ESG problem. No, for well, look, it, it, it sort of is. But remember, all we're, we're not making any judgments. What we're trying to do is help companies have less carbon. So, an example. Um, Many of the technology businesses in the world have committed to uh, net zero, net zero very quickly. What they need is renewable power. So we are building them renewable power in many countries in the world. So we're one of the largest builders. We're one of the largest owners of renewable power, and we're building solar and wind in 15 countries in the world. Uh, and we're providing that to them. And, and in, before, you used to sell power into the grid. Today, we're actually selling it to the corporate customers. And they're using within their systems. Are you structuring these deals? I mean, are they all different based on the needs of the borrower and/or end user of the yeah. cash, or they do they share something in, similar? So I, I would say they're all bespoke transactions. And uh, I guess the uh, increasingly what these large institutions and why companies come to us is because we can provide a buyout, we can provide a partnership, we can lend money. And so we have all of those uh, activities that we can provide on a scale basis. Not many people can provide 500 million, a billion, 2 billion, 5 billion, 10 billion. With Intel, uh, we recently committed to half of a $32 billion facility in Arizona, you may uh, recall. I do. I want to I want to discuss that a bit as well, because I'm not sure people realize how instrumental you were in their ability to, or at least their plan to build all these fabs. Yeah. And look, it's just people need. Um, so we're our. Our goal is be a solutions provider on a global basis in the industries that we participate in. And if people need debt, we'll do it. How did the passage of the what is still called the Inflation Reduction Act impact, if at all, the way you think about allocating capital in this area? You know, look, we, we bought we own a lot of things and we bought a lot of them prior to that, not because it was uh, we knew it was coming, but uh, we benefited from that a lot. What, what it essentially means is that if somebody had uh, a bunch of projects and they expected 50% of them would get built out, because of the Inflation Reduction Act, 75% will get built out, which just means that we're going to compress more projects into less time, and that's good for business. Right. And it's going to get more renewables built out in America. And what kind of what kind of returns are you typically targeting, particularly in the interest rate environment in which we live now? Yeah. So, look, our uh, on the low end of debt products, which would be the lowest type of returns that we get, mezzanine debt products are in the circa nine ten percent return, and our equity investments, which uh, we target higher returns, are close to twenty. You know, our, our real estate strategies have earned 20% compound for 20 years. Our private equity business, 28% compound for 20 years. Uh, infrastructure, close to 15. Th these are high returns. And uh, I, on transition, I, we're going to do good and also do well. And uh, we don't have to compromise returns to, uh, to get 
to get uh, returns out of this business. Is it a lower return business, though, than some of the others you just Look, mentioned? Look, it's, it's, it's over time, it's been slightly lower. Oh, I think it's going to, I think our returns will get better over time. Why? Just because of, just because of the build out and the need for capital out there. And uh, so I think the returns are going to get better from here. Um, speaking overall, I, you know, given your view into so many different businesses in the economy, how are you feeling about things right now? Um, we seem to have reached potentially a stasis in rates, but it doesn't mean in any way that they're coming down anytime soon. What are you sort of seeing and feeling and expecting as this year uh, ends and next year begins? Look, David, I, I think the uh, interest rates stabilizing is what ne is, was needed. What, uh, what worried most investors was that interest rates were going to go like this for some unforeseen reason. Nobody thought it was going to happen, but people worried it might. And just stabilized rates will bring, is bringing, over the last three months, you've seen the capital markets everywhere in the world start to open back up. Uh, banks are opening back up. And that's, that's a big positive for business transactions and for business overall. And, and that's, certainly, uh, that's certainly happening.